All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from actually a very, very sunny San Diego today. Uh, and today I'm also delighted to welcome another fellow Californian who is up the coast in Pleasanton. Uh, and that is Satyam Kantunani. How are you doing, Satyam? I'm doing well. Awesome. Uh, thanks for having me. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, Satyam, is, Satyam is the founder of UX Reactor, which he founded with his brother. Uh, and it has become one of the fastest growing specialized experience design firms in the U.S., with a team of over 60 plus people across uh, three continents. And this is great. I'm so delighted that we're going to talk today because what we're going to talk about is um, user experiences on user centric innovation, because right now, you know, user experience, that's become a real great buzzword. Everybody's talking about user experience. And um, but I don't think very many people really understand what that means and how actually uh, how big a topic that really is. And how it's how it's much more um, how it's much more expansive than than people probably realize. A lot of people still think user experience is just like oh yeah, nice website. So uh, uh, so maybe you bottom line it for us. Absolutely, uh, you know it's actually interesting, John, that uh, even people in the line of profession in the line of user experience, I don't think they understand it completely. Uh, and it, it took a very much an outside end perspective to kind of truly uh, uh, value it. Uh, and that also was my uh, call to action to kind of found uh, UX Reactor. Uh, on, the, on the basic level, uh, every system that's designed in the world for a user is actually projecting an experience. I mean, that, and that could be any system. It could be a door you're opening, uh, elevator uh, that you're engaging with, a phone you're using. It, and then you, the user is experiencing it. And the interesting thing about users experiencing is they have different users, different contexts, different needs. Uh, and so someone has to really spend the time thinking about uh, designing that and, and, and focusing on that. Uh, so that's kind of where the whole profession of user experience kind of came to be. Uh, and uh, it's a very, very uh, effective profession if done right. Uh, but again, a big part of it is also how, you, how a product feels, how it looks like. So, Unfortunately, that's the visceral element that often gets confused in the grand scheme of the other things that happen in the uh, profession of user experience. Uh, but what's interesting is actually the, the, the genesis of user experience started in the Second World War. Uh, and it's mm -hmm. an interesting story by itself uh, where you know systems were being created really fast. I mean, airplanes and tanks, and but then users were after using it were not really very effective in using it. The classic story goes that the, you know the researchers found consistently that you know a lot of people were ejecting from their airplanes right before they were entering enemy territory, and uh, and further research they realized that the arming your weapon and eject switch were actually had the right the same evidence. And in the fog of war, people were mistaking uh, eject uh, to uh, you know arming weapon and then immediately getting out. So again, it's user experience in a in a very very different context yeah yeah i mean that's got to be uh, <laughs> that's a great story because you can imagine if you're like oh i'm gonna gonna fire off my weapons now over enemy territory and then i hit the eject button by accident and suddenly i'm like oops uh, here i go <laughs> landing in in amongst the enemies yeah that's that's that, that's funny and it and it is uh, and so even today uh, I think this is the point, and this is why people like you have been so successful. Even today, you get head scratching user experiences sometimes, and and I love it because sometimes the, the companies will have like we're user centric or we're customer centric or all of this kind of stuff on their websites and everything, but then when you got to go use their product or, or experience their service, it, it's completely at odds with that. It it is it, you know it's. It... It's not easy to do because it, there's a lot of things that come together to make it work. So every I've not come across any organization till date that doesn't say that they're user centric. And the challenge that comes in is that when you're talking about user centric, it actually could be as simple as like, hey, I, I love my customers. I'll give them whatever I want. That's one way of it. The other way is completely with the right way is like, I am always under, I understand my users. I am always anticipating for my users. And my job is to delight them each and every time they engage with me. And for that to happen, that's a systemic change. 
it's an organizational change. Uh, and a lot of people and leaders don't understand that there's a huge difference between how you operate. And that's the reason why it kind of a, a Steve Jobs or a, a Elon Musk uh, or a Tony uh, Shea from uh, Zappos are able to drive that because they understand every element that goes into being user centric versus like, hey, I just, you know, will make sure that, you know, customer service, they call me, I'll take care of them. That's just one of the many touch points that you have. And so it's a very, uh, I, the best example I give is uh, analogy I give is like, uh, you know, being fit. Everyone agrees to be fit, but then no one actually knows is a diet, sleep, uh, exercise, a DNA, what exactly it is. So if you really have to orchestrate it across all this for each individual to kind of succeed. And the same applies to organizations. Yeah, no, that's a that that, that is a, a great point, and I and I, and I do uh, sympathize with the challenge. I mean, we all face it every day because you know user experience is a continuum, and obviously any part at any stage that ex, you know that experience can can take a, a wrong turn. Uh, the other thing is, uh, is that um, is we we you know when i came to america the first thing i realized is this country loves acronyms right you know people would yeah i used to go up to microsoft in the early days and they literally used to speak in acronyms and you'd just be like you know could you please could have let me know what that means it would certainly help so now we have you know we have ui we've ux we've xt what are they what, what's the difference between the three of them so i, I... So the profession itself is an adolescence, and therefore you'll see a lot of different states. The other thing is a lot of the professionals in the profession also, it's a melting pot. So it's actually a fascinating profession because you'll see people from architecture background, from engineering background, from graphic design background. So you'll see all that. And because of which what happens is then everyone has a different perspective. Uh, and again, it's, uh, I'll give you my perspective on what the, the constructs work. And in the longest while when technology started, the word UI became very much, or GUI, a graphical user mm -hmm. interface, yeah. became very important. Then it kind of further got evolved and it became UI design, which is user interface, anything that is user interface and design. Uh, but then what actually happens is when you're designing a screen, a user interface, you often forget the systemic element of it because I'll give you an example, right? You know, you may design a beautiful report, but a better user experience is not having a report. Magically, everything. So if someone's looking for data to see uh, on a daily basis, how are they doing up or down, you know, going up or down, we should actually just tell them, hey, you know, send them an email saying that, hey, you're doing well, and that's it. Or maybe no, no news is great news. Uh, but again, looking at the user's intent and context will allow us to kind of even get the UI away. So the first level is UI. The second, what we say is PX, which is kind of understand the product experience, understand every facet of it and across the ecosystem. And then you start looking at, uh, prior to this, another term that kind of gets thrown around a lot of CX is customer experience. Mm -hmm. uh, but then we've realized that, you know, it's customer experience is often confused with customer support, customer success. Uh, but when you really think about the macro level, the whole organization transforming around the user and their experience is what we call experience transformation. It kind of goes hand in hand with digital transformation because a lot of companies are going with digital uh, mm -hmm. uh, focus, but they're going at it with a perspective like I'll give you five tools to apply and, and kind of do what you can normally do uh, faster. Uh, and But that doesn't help because you still have to understand it, use it build system. So the experienced uh, transformation that goes along with digital transformation is what uh, consistently makes organizations successful. So if you ask me, the hierarchy is UI, which is table stakes. We need to design really beautiful screens and interfaces, but then do it on a product as an ecosystem and then think about every element. And sometimes even thinking about how do I get rid of any screen and the macro level, how does the whole organization rise to think about user and user centricity, and which is called uh, what we call experience transformation. So it's kind of the value chain as you move up, uh, but you will start seeing a lot of that. And the one term that I, of, I often hear in the market, which shows a lot of naivety of the person using it is UI UX. Uh, there is nothing called UI UX. It's like hmm. calling a doctor, you know, pharmacist. I mean, there are two different hmm. lines. You know, it's you're either a doctor, a surgeon, or you're a pharmacist. Uh, UI, UX are just two different mindsets, two different structures. Uh, UI designers can become UX designers. UX designers can become UI designers, but they're two different lines. And all the people who say, I want a UI, UX designer, or I'm doing UI, UX, just shows that you know they are still in the 
you know the, the baby phase of an adolescent profession yeah no absolutely and and the other part of it too is as you just outlined there is you know part of the user experience like it can you can it can be digital it can be online but it's also it can be personal so absolutely. and i think that's the that's the hard part about it is you can create a fantastic experience with your product or online but then when you maybe try to call the company or connect with them in some other way and then you have a totally different experience uh i mean we see we see this we we see this a lot where people think that it is the digital and they forget about the other parts so digital is obviously becoming more and more important but uh, the best experiences, and that's why I'm saying experientially transformed organization is looking at every facet of experience. And I'll give you another interesting story that comes in is there's a guy, I, I, this is a Facebook story, uh, which was publicized. Uh, a gentleman, a, a fairly uh, you know, a senior gentleman showed up at the Facebook headquarters and then walks into the reception and says, I forgot my password, I need to reset it. Uh, and and now from a Facebook perspective, I'm sure the product managers spent a lot of time building the forgot password workflows and everything else. But the experience here is like I showed up at Facebook and I'm talking to you at Facebook. I forgot my password. I need to get my password reset. Uh, and that's an experience that also needs to be thought through, built. Uh, and that's kind of where an organization truly gets evolves to the next level. But again, the, the factor is... Uh, you know, even nuances, I'll give you another example. It's not only in digital and completely service. Uh, I was working with a, a financial product where, uh, you know, money, if there was any any chance of fraudulent issues, we would restrict your account. So on the website, we say your account is restricted and then they call customer service and then customer service is like, yeah, your account is frozen just because the semantics were different and di the different systems. Mm. And the user would go livid, which is like, what do you mean frozen? I mean, it says restricted here. I mean, and it's the same thing, but they're two different designers, two different system th uh, people that worked on it, and they just use different nuances. And that just, you could consistently see like, like how dare you kind of freeze my account when I actually am legit. And then it just, just went uh, crazy. So how can, how, as, a, as a business leader, how can you get your organization to coalesce around the concept of the more comprehensive concept of user experience? See, I think as it, it's, a, it's a rigorous process, but it's not hard. And I'll tell you, uh, you know, in, in a way, uh, so if, every organization has users and, and, and that's why we make you know, profit. But understanding them in the detail that you actually can, you know, are, you understand what their journeys are, what their pain points are, what their opportunities are. So then you need to have the right people to kind of extract that and kind of come consistently projecting it in the organization. It shouldn't be, oh, yeah, you're talking to the user, you're user centered. It should be somebody who's coming in and bringing that. And in the line of work that we are, we call it user research. And so there should be a much more stronger user research. And there are people who actually do that. They're that they go to college just to kind of extract insights and spread across the company. And once you have those insights, then how do you kind of activate those insights and kind of work through? Like, you know, if you see that, you know, hey, I'm, I'm seeing a lot of opportunity. And like we started this call talking about, you know, a unif tools that are available out there. I mean, there are people mm -hmm. are using web conferencing tools today, but really I'm thinking about, the same web conferencing tool use, is used by a kindergartner who's studying, uh, by a, a lawyer who's trying to kind of do the legal system digitally now, by, you know, we and a podcast. It's not built that way. So again, looking at understanding, hey, how do I build this for the legal system? And then understanding the nuances and, and, and doing research around that and then building that and quickly prototyping and testing that out allows you to kind of really scale and expand. So again, building the right people the right process around user user experience, the right environment and the right mindsets. Uh, and all four have to be well curated. It's a profession, it's not a skill. Uh, so again, leaders have to approach it that way, just like they would build marketing as a profession, they would need to kind of focus on this and then invest in it and then see that you know it gets them the value, which honestly, I mean, it's, it's out there for organizations that have done uh, the, the Airbnbs, the PayPal's, the Disney's, mm. uh, the, uh, Google's uh, who really have invested in this particular skill, they're seeing the value because they are really spending the time building that great delight. Yeah, yeah, no, it, it is it is really interesting. And it's interesting on a couple of levels because just as an aside, what's great about this period of time now is there's so many new jobs and so many new roles and disciplines being created that like didn't exist, didn't exist a couple of years ago. 
Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. But I think, uh, I mean, there's user research. I mean, there's actually five different skills that come together to build great experiences. There's a user researcher who's constantly seeking and extracting data. Uh, it's and, and Again, uh, it's a melting pot. People come from a lot of different lines of work. There is a, a interaction design, looking at the nuances of how the system is designed and how it uh, and how can you kind of optimize it. There's visual design, which is the most common thing that everyone thinks the user experience is, which is how does it look and feel and, and how does the button look? How does the screen look? How does the system look? Uh, and then you have uh, strategy, which is kind of bringing all of this together uh, and, and looking at, you know, how do I prioritize? How do I deprioritize? Which should I focus on? Uh, and then content experience, which is kind of the details of the words that get written on it. So this together is, at least in the digital context, you kind of look at this. And then when you look at service or any other context, you kind of evolve from these skills. But again, everything starts from understanding the user and their experience and then looking at the design and technology, which unfortunately is the other way around as most companies start with technology first and then they go into the next step of you know design and then figuring out how the users will use it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. That's normally the way. And the interesting thing that you said there uh, about Zoom a few minutes ago, it, it'll be interesting to see, obviously, Zoom exploded during COVID and, and so many different people use it. And as you said, for, for many, many different things, it will be interesting to see how people maybe migrate away from the system towards platforms that are built, as you said, for what they're looking to do, as opposed to just have this generic platform that you try to use for everything. Absolutely. And I think that's where the biggest innovations are. And not only innovations, billion dollar innovations, right? So think about what Zoom or, or any of the unified tools, uh, unified communication tools do is in the, in the pandemic, it actually showed that, yes, you can do this remotely. So that has been proven. Everyone kind of has now registered that it has plus or minus and so on. But now you're looking at a legal uh, system or a, or a local court system looking at, hey, how do I now operationalize this on a much greater scale? I don't have to kind of, again, transporting uh, an accused from, uh, you know, uh, uh, from the local prison to the courthouse. It's, it just takes time. And, and in fact, it has also is not uh, uh, environmentally sustainable. So they, someone has to now build that system. Now, if you look at arbitration rooms, that means you need to have three different rooms have, uh, going through where there's an arbitrator, there's party one and party two. So again, someone who spends the time and designs and builds that experience for them is going to win that you know billion dollar legal system. The same as like mm -hmm. you know how someone looks at it from education uh, look, will own that you know billion dollar op or multi billion dollar opportunity for education. The same applies to you know healthcare. I mean now you're talking. I mean just think about it. Three years back, talking to a doctor uh, when you are uh, remotely was kind of a fancy thing that would happen. Now it's actually a, a standard operating procedure for most health systems. But again, mm -hmm. how do you build a system around that? And these are all multi, multi-billion dollar problems that, you know, whoever figures out and, and leads with experience will get the biggest adoption and therefore the biggest uh, profit. Yeah, no, I, I agree. It's an it's an exciting it's an exciting time if you're if you're one of the people who wants to take on that challenge. Uh, obviously, if you uh, as you were talking about taking the the uh, accused to court, well, I'm sorry, that's going to rule out your chances of escaping when you get to court. So <laughs> there you go. There's all there's always an upside for some people, a downside for others. Um, absolutely, but, absolutely. Um, so where do you where do you see this going? What's the what's the next frontier of of all of this? I mean, you know, kind of put on put on your your future hat or take out your crystal ball. I, at least for the next decade, I let me project for the next decade. What's yeah. been very clear is uh, with the pandemic and everything else that's happened around that that the world has to ha rapidly digitize. I mean, yep. if you're not digitizing, you're going to die. That's the that's mm -hmm. the standard. Uh, if, if any organization hasn't figured that out, I mean, they probably are, or, you know, they, they will soon. But then what's interesting is the organizations that are transforming digitally and, and getting into that G first model, if they don't lead from who's my user and how do I give them the best experience? Because one thing we all realize is the competition is a click away, right? Especially as systems are becoming more uh, as a service. You know, if I don't like this software, I'm going to go to the next one. If I don't like that, I'm going to go to the next yeah. one. Whichever works for me and whichever gives me the best experience, I'm willing to do that. And therefore, if the organizations that are willing to completely take it on 
uh, and build it from a user first perspective and build that unique experience and delight for the user, they will win it all and win it all handsomely. And that's kind of the biggest you know, uh, thing that we are noticing. Uh, and we are also seeing our business kind of continue to kind of propel you know, significantly forward during the pandemic because obviously digitization is happening. But in the digitization cycle, a lot of people are still stuck in the UI layer. And we mm -hmm. know, you know, we worked with one organization that really said, even when they were, they had, you know, a few million dollars in bank, they actually said, we want to go experience transformation first. We want to build an organization around users and only users. And and fast forwarded in five years, they're valued at three and a half billion dollars, and they grew 300 mm -hmm. percent year over year last year. So we are just seeing that impact that's happening. And the next decade is all for, you know, technology, digitization. Uh, and how do you build better experiences? I think a lot of times people think that technology is trying to disambiguate the human in the loop. In fact, no, we need to make the human more successful. Yeah. And, and that's the thing that people are confusing that because we need to, they're still doing the job. They're still going to be lawyers. They're still going to be you know, educators. They're still going to be doctors. We just need to make sure we accelerate them instead of removing them from the system. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, and I think uh, I mean, one of the great things about digital transformation and automation and all of that is you can take out a lot of rote and routine tasks and you can actually you can actually put the person in a much better position where you can use your brain and do the high value work as opposed to, to the routine and, and rote. And I totally agree with you. There was a lot of lip service being paid to digital transformation before the pandemic. There were some leaders, some people who were obviously uh, leading edge on that. I think the pandemic uh, showed people that lip service doesn't work anymore. You really got to get on board. And we, I totally agree with you. I think digital transformation is absolutely critical now. And if you're not considering that or you're not even looking at it, if you don't even know what that means, you're, you're, you're in trouble. Absolutely. Absolutely. No, the, the, the world is, is, I mean, what's the thing? I mean, your iPhone or, or your, your smartphone has way more computing power than this than the polar missions that went to uh, in the moon. And I, I think we are we are surrounded. We are a blessed generation. We need to understand mm -hmm. that. Uh, and uh, at the same time, we need to make sure that technology is helping us. Then, I mean, there's, so, there's still people that don't understand. I mean, all the organizations that are investing in certifications out there, it's actually a, a, a classic case where the reason why someone needs to get certified in your product is because your product is not easy. This, if someone has to get trained in your product, that means it's not uh, your product is not easy. And I think that is a nuance that that's a mindset that I think many people need to start thinking about. Since when did you get certified on you know Chrome or <laughs> or on an iPhone? And and I think that's the mindset. That's bet great experiences when they start coming together, uh, and and that's that's the future. Yeah, no, I I love that about the uh, I love that about the um, about the certification stuff because I totally agree because that's uh, you know when you, when you get into a product you now expect it to to be easy to use just like your iPhone and all of that and uh, you know if they say well it is once you've done like these five certifications you're like yeah okay I'll go somewhere else now. Well, listen, uh, Satyan, this has been fantastic. Uh, all of Satyan's information will be below this video, but before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about yourself and what you do. Sure. Uh, so uh, I uh, am the principal and the founder of UX Reactor. Uh, uh, we help a lot of organizations kind of figure out their user-centric problems. So we help them all the way from like, you know, how do you get uh, user-centered to kind of doing it for them as a consulting service. So we want to help businesses multiply their business value by design and experience design. And that's what we do. Uh, for those of you who are more interested in what exactly in the specifics, uh, there's a book coming out on the first week of March, uh, User Experience Design, a practical playbook for uh, to fuel business growth. Uh, so it's available and, uh, you know, feel free to kind of uh, get a sense of that and you will you'll understand the, the play and how we operate. Yeah, no, that's fantastic. And I'd highly recommend people go check out the book, check out their work. Also, you know, please, uh, please, please subscribe. <laughs> please comment. And please share. Anyway, again, Absolutely. Satyam, thank you for thank you for today. Thank you all for watching and listening. And I'll see you all again really soon. Thank you. Thank you. Take care.